165 pounds. Nice that Ray weighed in at 65. Now I'm not only fighting a old welterweight, but an old fat welterweight. Thank you. fight can happen anywhere, in an alley, a gym, even a kitchen, between strangers or friends, amateurs or professionals. When it happens between champions, and one of them is Sugar Ray Leonard, we show it to you. Hello, I'm Larry Merchant. Like you, no doubt, I was skeptical when Leonard Lalonde was announced. Donnie Lalonde or LeBlonde, a vegetarian, a marathoner, a budding actor model who tints his hair, he looked like a lot of guys I've seen losing in the first round at Wimbledon. But on closer inspection, he could punch. He was bigger and younger than Leonard. So skepticism turned to curiosity. And then the fight turned into a fight. For the next 75 minutes, we'll show it to you in its entirety. Then we'll examine highlights with both Sugar Ray Leonard and Donnie Lalonde. And finally, we'll take a look into their futures. Now. Monday, November 7th, you are there. It is a mild, breezy night in the desert, a wonderful setting for a little piece of history. Tonight, from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, HBO Sports presents World Championship Boxing. The WBC super middleweight and light heavyweight titles are on the line as WBC light heavyweight champion Donnie Lalonde takes on the former welterweight, junior middleweight, and middleweight world champion Sugar Ray Leonard. Here in the desert, an early evening glow settles over the parking lot arena in which so many of this decade's greatest fights have taken place. Here, where Ray Leonard once rallied to stop Thomas Hearns, and where 19 months ago he shocked the world by outpointing marvelous Marvin Hagler, the man many regard as the greatest fighter of his generation, readies to face his most unlikely opponent, a heretofore largely unknown light heavyweight champion from Canada named Donnie Golden Boy Lalonde. And now, accompanied by most of the men who have been with him since the beginning of his professional career, back in 1977, Sugar Ray Leonard begins to enter the ring. Only two fights in the last six years and nine months. One of them, the nine-round technical knockout of Kevin Howard in Worcester, Massachusetts in 1984. And then in 1987, on April 6th, the victory many regarded as the greatest, certainly one of the most unexpected of his or anyone else's career, the 12-round decision over marvelous Marvin Hagler. And it's because of his inactivity, as well as his age and the fact that he's moving up in weight, that there have been declining odds in Las Vegas. What started out as a four to one fight in favor of Leonard is now two and a half to one. 34 wins, 
The only loss to Roberto Duran was avenged. 24 knockouts. And, of course, world championships in three separate weight classes coming into tonight. He has the chance tonight to win titles awarded by the WBC in two more weight classes, which would give him an unprecedented total of five. And there is Donnie Lalonde as he prepares to make his second defense of the title he won from Eddie Davis when the two were matched for the title which had been vacated by Thomas Hearns and which he later defended in Trinidad against Leslie Stewart. A lot of perseverance and a little luck have launched him in to a $5 million payday. 31 wins, two losses, 26 knockouts. The losses, a six-round decision to Wilbert Vampire Johnson in Winnipeg back in 1981, and he was knocked out by a fighter named Willie Edwards in May of 1985. Tale of the tape, the number to which most people pay a lot of attention is the age of Ray Leonard, 32 years old. Perhaps more significant, though, is weight. He weighs 165 pounds. He was 158 for Hagler in April of 1987, so he enters here seven pounds heavier than ever before. Lalonde has usually weighed closer to 175 in his bouts, but he says this weight of 167 is more natural for him. And here is our punch stat profile of the fighters, how many punches they throw, how busy they are. As you can see, Leonard much more the active or accurate puncher. Lalonde presumably the heavier puncher. Obviously, not much of a jab for Lalonde, landing two out of 35 in that particular fight. He uses it for radar so that he can throw his right behind it. In fact, because he doesn't have a left, he had to develop that devastating right that got him here. The rules for the bout are those of the World Boxing Council. Most significant, there is no three knockdown rule in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight. And now, let's go to ring announcer Chuck Hall for pre fight introductions. Well, the next bout of the evening is Dr. Elias Ghanem of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The officials assigned for the next bout of the night, the judges are Chuck Chiampa of Las Vegas, Nevada, Stuart Kirschbaum of Detroit, Michigan, and Franz Marty of Ostrichen, Switzerland. The timekeeper is Mike Lachella. Counting in the knockdowns, Al Bysak. The attending physician ringside, Doctors Flip Pomansky, Donald Romeo, and James Game. And your referee is Richard Steele. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Middleweight and Light Heavyweight Championships of the World. Introducing, in the red corner, Fighting out of Potomac, Maryland, weighing in at 165 pounds, with a professional record of 34 wins, one defeat with 24 KOs. He is the holder of three different world titles in three weight divisions. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Sugar Rick Leonard. Fighting out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Weighing in at 167 pounds. His professional record consists of 31 wins, two defeats, with 26 KO. He is the WBC light heavyweight champion of the world, Danny, the Golden Boy, Lalonde. at all times. Shake hands, good luck. There are two scenarios that this fight might follow. One was the recent Spinks Cooney fight in which the smaller man just hit the bigger, slower man from every angle, wore him down, and finally stopped him as much from exhaustion as from concussion. The other fight was the famous first fight between Johansson and Patterson in which the right hand of Johansson just went splat and knocked Patterson out. 
Early action finds Lalonde throwing three. Left jabs make it four. He has yet to land. He tried a right to the body. So far, Leonard is looking and waiting. That right landed to the body, and that's the right idea. Dig, dig down to that body. That's the chopping overhand right that Lalonde hopes to do damage with. And he's trying to prove right now that he can, in fact, make the left jab effective. He's not doing bad with it. Keeps letting on the move with that. He's snapping it out a little better than we anticipated. Well, Milan separated his shoulder years ago as a result of a hockey accident. It came out of place supposedly as many as 30 times, and he has a Teflon pin in it, which limits his left arm's mobility. Right now, Leonard is staying away from him, and he said that he wouldn't. He said that he wanted to get inside to take away the leverage that Lalonde would need to land that overhand right. Well, most fighters lie. <laughs> you should know, Kevin. Lalonde was very cool when he came in. And he came in you know, right after Leonard, which I like to see. That was a good left hook to the body. Who said this man ain't got a left hand? The right hand slipped just a little bit by Leonard. And he came right back with the right hand, which was good. So far, Lalonde has been far and away the busier fighter. His plan is to try to pressure Leonard and make him fight every second of every round, which he says Hagler didn't do. And that, that's a good, uh, that's a good uh, plan. If he can keep it up, Managed we'll find to land out. a short left as Leonard came in. He's landed two jabs this round. Ray has landed only one right hand in the round. Leonard appears content so far just to size Lalonde up. Get a feel for what he might do. The left jab considerably more effective than we have been given reason to believe. He <laughs> told fight his life. Leonard going to the body, but it was a lunge. So I gotta say, it wasn't the fighter saying he wasn't gonna use the left hand. All the so-called experts were saying he doesn't have a left hand at all. Leonard lands a left hand to the cheek of Lalonde. A good exchange there. Now they begin to mix it up inside for the first time. And Leonard landed a jab as the round came to a close, but so far it was Donnie Lalonde who was the initiator of the action. As he promised, he feels that if he can keep Ray busy, he'll tire in the late stages of the fight. Just keep pumping now. Slide away from him a little bit more. So line him up real good now. Stay around one time and nail him with that right hand. Real good when he coming at you. See how he jabbed that thing? He's off balance. Catch him. Off balance. Don't catch him in the middle. Hey, you make a mistake, you got to come at him every time. Okay? Real good first round. Real good first round. Okay? Mouthpiece. Help you fight this guy. Calm down. Okay, right. And you did fine. When he does that, wait for him and throw your punches. Very nice. You handle Step it good. Step with the jab. Step with the jab. Get closer okay. to him. Okay. Very nice. Way to work. Right out. Don't even walk and take the referee stop you. Keep this, going. This is a Keep fight going. between a Ferrari and a pickup truck. And the pickup truck is trying to make it a, a demolition derby, and the Ferrari is trying to make it a foot race. The voice in Ray Leonard's corner was that of Janks Morton, who has been with him from the beginning and has always had primary responsibility for training the fighter. The voice in Lalonde's corner, a New York trainer named Tommy Gallagher, who inherited Lalonde a couple of years ago from another young trainer named Teddy Atlas, with whom Lalonde had a falling out. <laughs> I got no comment on that one. I know you comment, would. I'll comment on the, on the advice out of that corner, which was good. He said to put the pressure on, make him fight. I saw Tommy Gallagher last week. He said his boy gonna knock him out in three rounds. I don't see that happening, but... Uh, <laughs> You gotta respect the power of the line. Good chair by Leonard. Leonard so far not showing the finesse or the style which carried him to victory over marvelous Marvin Hagler. Perhaps he doesn't think 
he'll need it. Or perhaps he's letting his mind get to him. He related to us the other day that he was starting to think, well, maybe he's in with a younger guy now. Maybe the age factor he was letting seep into his mind, which is a mistake. That was good body work there. I like that. Leonard is not stepping up inside and releasing his hands Another quickly. Jam. <laughs> yeah, Lalonde continues to throw it. And land it. Snapping it. Surprise, surprise. This is a big surprise to many who called him a one-handed fighter. Good left hook. Good left hook by Lalonde. There you and go. some good oh. punches inside by Lalonde. Yeah, I think he hurt him. Leonard holding on. Remember, he's never fought a man this big. He wanted to know what the right hand would feel like. Maybe now he knows a little bit. Maybe he does. Good right to the body by Leonard. Maybe woke Leonard up a little. that he'd be able to counter if Lalonde tried to pressure him a lot. Now he's starting to pick up the tempo a bit. He's starting to stalk him, like he stalked Hearns that first fight. People seem to forget that. I don't forget that. I remember that first Duran fight. He proved he was a fighter then. Good jab by Leonard. A good left hand. Begin to see the difference in hand speed. Milan said that he didn't believe Leonard could hurt him. Well, so far he hasn't. He's hit him for good shots. For the first time in the two rounds, we saw some of the quickness of Ray Leonard, which is his great advantage. But he really hasn't done much with it. He seems tentative to me. A little unsure of himself. For what it's worth, I've given the first two rounds to the champion, who is Lalonde. Okay. Good one. round play. Good one. round play. Just keep popping him, just like he's popping. Don't let him rough him. Now roll him a little bit. Spend him some time. Don't let him just rough him back on the ropes, OK? He's trying to lay on him. Let's go. Boom. Step in with the jab. Start early. Very good. Way to work. Go on the water, please. Give me the water, please. One thing we know for sure so far is that the big event hasn't intimidated Lalonde. No, it hasn't. That's right. No, it hasn't. And Ray was banking on that. He thought for sure that the crowd, the lights, the scene, the environment would cow Lalonde just a little bit. Maybe we got a hint this morning at the weigh-in when Lalonde got off a great one-liner after Leonard weighed in. Yes, Leonard refused to shake his hand. And Lalonde went to a microphone and said, referring to his weight, I thought I was fighting an old welterweight. Now I know I'm fighting a fat old welterweight. Lalonde just landed two or three uppercuts in there. They didn't do much damage, but they let Ray know that he knows how to throw it and land it. Interestingly, as he moves away, Leonard is circling to his left. He had told us that he would move to his right to stay away from Milan's right hand. Now he goes in that direction, but then backs up in the other way. Well, I think Ray was going to the left to get away from the right hand. That's the way he's supposed to be. So he can fight back with a left hook. Milan scoring to the body. Still no flurry or explosion of quickness inside from Ray Leonard. Nothing yet. And one more thing about Lalonde being intimidated by the situation. You have to remember his upbringing and the things he went through as a child, the beings that it took. Now he's coming out you know, call for, uh, for child abuse. That alone, to come through that, that alone, you can face anything after that. Between ages 11 and 15, Lalonde says he was severely beaten at least once a week by his stepfather now a public and vocal advocate on behalf of the victims of child abuse. That alone could be the motivation to bring him through. Leonard missed with the right. Lalonde landed to the body. Just missed with the right cross. It went whizzing by Ray's chin. That's got to send a message to him. I think Ray's finding out that uh, he may have bit off one league of chew here. 
It's still early, Kevin. It is still early, but he threw a very sloppy right Watch hand over there, which I don't like to see. Watch it out. Watch it out, boy. Watch it out. Leonard landing with the right to the body. And again, Lalonde keeping Ray at arm's length with the jab. Lalonde with the jab. Let it go! the right for the first time. And another round which has to do something to build Donnie Lalonde's confidence. Definitely, Very definitely. Good. All right, let's keep the rhythm now. Beautiful, champ, beautiful, let's go. Come down, take a water. Donnie, in your nose, fill up your lungs and breathe out your mouth, come on. Donnie, listen to me, Don. I you got to throw some combinations. Throw okay. one, two at a time. You're hitting them, but you're only throwing one punch at a time. Okay. Okay? He's trying to, you know, trying to suck you in. Okay. Just pick your jab. That's all we have to do. Pick it up. Stop moving your shoulder. You can count them better. Drop. Fight until you drop. Very nice. Way to work. Right out. Let the, let the record stop. This is a point where I'm straining to hear the voices of Angelo Dundee in Leonard's corner because he has gotten off to a bad start. Yes, he has. You can't count Leonard out, like Jim was saying, because he's come back against uh, Hearn. Well, I don't think he beat Hagler. I have to say that for the record. I still don't think he beat him. You are in good and populous company. Opinion is widely divided. Leonard beginning to step inside and score now. He landed a right hand earlier, and there a left to the chest. But it had no effect on Lalonde. Or well, visible effect. Fire the left hook to the body. Again, Leonard stepping up, and now he's starting, starting to show hand speed for the first time in the bout. This is going to become an interesting fight right now. Lalonde is, is hanging in there. He hasn't wilted or anything from the couple of combinations. He, Ray hit him with a left hook, hit him with a right hand. He's firing back. Pushing it out. Great. Step back, step back. It's going to be exciting evening here. <laughs> Another left hook. Punching it out. Punching it out. Ray holding on now, playing possum. Right hand by Lalonde. As they pulled apart. Didn't land. Lanced a little bit. Oh, great. Step back, step back, step back, man. All right, come on. Oh, hurt right hand. How did he go on the right the hand? right hand. He was measuring him. We're going to find out right now. We'll see if we have that Johansson Patterson situation here. But well, remember, Ray Leonard has always taken a great punch. You want to get on his bicycle right now. More than a minute to go in the round. And Leonard now getting inside to try to keep the lawn from getting leverage. That's the second time Ray's been down in his career. The left hand landed, and it was an awkward left, but Lalonde seems to be able to chop away a little bit with it. Oh, boy. Right hand again, and Leonard holding on. Ray staying cool on the fire. Just missed. Exchange. Just missed again. Ray ought to get on his bike. I'm telling you, better get on that bicycle. Lalonde may have missed his chance here. Leonard's eyes beginning to clear. Coming back with the jab. He better not get cocky. Ray trying to score with the right hand. Ray better not get cocky. A moment of real suspense here. As round four comes to a close. Oh, great, great, great. And a good piece of professional workmanship by Ray Leonard as he gets out of trouble. No holding, it out. There may be a trickle Punching of blood in Ray Punching Leonard's left eye. Is it Ray or the... Yeah. Maybe from his nose, we're not sure yet. He looked at his glove. Oh. Lalonde right missing back. wildly with the right. Ray came back and Lalonde came back. That's a good round. Eddie, 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 come up here. Come on. Get down there. Let's 
take a look and see how we catch that quick right hand. Landed on the forehead, it looked like. But when a big man hits a smaller man any place in a vulnerable spot, down he goes. That affects the balance of forehead. That's why Ray was able to get back up and survive. Almost on top of the head. The reason he connected in that round is because Ray knew that he started slow and was trying to get something done. Ray Lane is caught by the nose. Second time Ray Lennon was down. First time was against Kevin Howard in 1984 in another comeback fight coming out of retirement. One of the things that's happening is here is he's giving himself a little mountain to climb. On my card anyway, he's already down five points. So Ray's going to have to get going, win rounds, and maybe win some of them big. I'll agree with that. Ray got a cut on the nose. Another first. Wouldn't it be interesting if Leonard wound up being the one who was in the position of needing a knockout in the late round? Fine. Well, he was in that position once before with Tommy Hearn. And he did it. I don't know if he's going to do it here. I really don't. But I think of all the scenarios you might have predicted, very few people would ever have expected that. That Lalonde would pile up points. Let's say it now, Ray's never really in a bad fight. And this one isn't a bad one either. Now there's the first time he's done that. He told us that he would plan to throw right uppercuts up under the left arm. Starting to move inside more effectively. And we're seeing more head movement from Ray now. And that's what he's got to do. Landing with a jab to try to get excited. Well, the, the line still find that right hand with some good snap. I guess the question is, will Lalonde fold up or he run out of gas? Oh. Right hand landed. Leonard was able to take that one. That, that cut's starting to bleed a little bit. Interesting fight. Exciting. Lalonde going to the body. Maybe after this round, Ray's going to be wishing he had Angel in that corner to stop the cut. Tell him what to do, give him some you know, enthusiasm, pick him up. Bolo, sloppy right hand just missed. Left hook landed. And the jab, Leonard becoming more and more effective. Solid right hand inside. And another right hand. Lalonde comes back. Lalonde is hurt. It's killing time for Ray. Took away from Ray. That was a tremendous break for Lalonde. Yes, it was. Tremendous. Leonard trying to get inside again. Believes he has Lalonde hurt. Better watch himself. Better watch himself. Lalonde's going to make it out of round five. Maybe. Bell won't save it. All right. Leonard had to come back, and he did. That's why he's a great fighter. That's a tough round of call. You're not seeing me. You're letting him in the fight. Let's go. Once you let him be first, it changes everything around. Let's go. You're the champion. Here you see Ray going to the attack, using his superior instincts, his superior reflexes. He has to take chances now. Good one of those punches, the right hand slips through, and Lalonde falls into a clinch. Harold, give us your scorecard. Well, Larry, I've got it four rounds to one in favor of Donnie Lalonde, 49 to 45. But the fact that Donnie Lalonde is standing so straight up, I think that he's vulnerable to a right hand, and I really believe Ray Lennon is going to get to him with the right hands. That's a good point, Harold. Round six begins. You're right. And ever more that. confident, Ray Leonard steps up inside again. Can't get too cocky. Can't question too is, confident. if he gets aggressive, will he catch another right hand? Exactly.
interestingly, Larry, you pointed out the two scenarios, Spinks Cooney and Johansson Patterson. We've already seen a little of both. Exactly. Good left hand by Leonard inside. More and more, he's getting off. It's as though he's shaking off the ring well, rust. Ah, I don't know about that. He's trying that right hand more. Roland stopped using the jab. Got to get back to that. Ray's fighting much more. He's taking more chances now. Doing it smart, moving, anti punches. Well, he's always had great awareness of his situation in each given bout, and surely he knows that he is in all likelihood behind on the scorecards. But more and more seizing the initiative. His experience is taking over now. He's been in with better fighters. Great, great. Leonard grins at Lalonde a little bit as Richard Steele pulls him apart. I break the right hand is still lethal for Lalonde. A couple of jabs, really no damage. But he's starting to land at will with the left hand, as he did there with the left hook, up close. But it's a solid right hand. Gentlemen, we have a fight on our hands here. Both men exposing themselves to danger as they sense a chance to go in for the kill. And if Ray Leonard knows one thing by now, it is that he wants no part of that chopping overhand right. What exchange. First one, then the other. Ray finished stronger. He's starting to dominate inside. Landed a right hand there. Well, I wouldn't say he's dominating. I wouldn't use that, that word. Control. How's that? Having the edge. A little edge, that's all. But for the moment, a clear edge. Lalonde has succeeded in one thing, which is making Ray fight. Fight more than one minute of a round as he did against Hagler. We'll see if that has an effect later in the fight. And we'll see what happens, what kind of an effect it's going to have on Lalonde. He may run out of gas. Lalonde got a little wild here. Didn't know how to follow up on an advantage. There was the good right hand that Lalonde landed. Ray is able to elude him here. What makes Ray Leonard a great fighter is his ability to fight in different styles. To box, to take the aggressive stance. That was a close round. Lalonde dominated the first two minutes, I thought, and then Ray came back strong in the last. Tries a crazy right hand. That's only crazy because he missed. They're both getting a little wild. I wondered if it would be entertaining. It is certainly all of that. Most definitely. He's trying to turn it into a Pier 6 brawl here now. Right hand landed for Leonard. 
Alon still trying to measure Ray for the right hand of his own. Leonard landing the right. You heard him. Lalonde running now. Came back with his own right hand, it looked like. But Lalonde's punches are more and more roundhouse. Good body shot. That's something we haven't seen by either man, really. Either man. I think Leonard Kevin is beginning to take the starch out of Donnie Lalonde. It's starting to look like that. I have to agree with you with that. We'll see if it swings back the other way or not. Oh, both moves to the right hand. Good left hook. Under a minute. Oh. Ray missed a golden opportunity to throw that right hand. Boy, he was late. I, I, I don't right. know that I've ever seen Ray Leonard in that kind of an exchange, in this kind of a brawl. Kevin, it's exactly the kind of fight he wanted. The question now is whether he can win it. Come on, come back here. Ray Leonard is staging a classic Ray Leonard comeback. He saw it against Tommy Hearns in this arena seven years ago. Leonard dealing out punishment on the ropes as round seven comes to an end. Look at Ray. He shouldn't do that. I got it. You could be firing back. Listen to me. And listen to me. You got to stay tight on the ropes and fit, fit. Don't look to lunge. Don't look to loop your punches. Calm down. Very nice. He's don't, ready, baby. He's ready. Don't try to knock him out with one right hand. You got to throw two, three punches. Two, three punches. Two, He's three ready, punches. Guys. There you see Leonard in an uncharacteristic fury. This is an important round for Lalonde. Lalonde is a vegetarian, but he, he fights like a carnivore. <laughs> Boy, round eight begins, and you say it's an important round for Lalonde, Kevin. Why? Well, I think Ray's taking away the momentum, and he has to get it back at this point. Otherwise, you know, Ray's level is lost on in. And right now, Leonard is landing at will with the left hand. Lalonde trying to come back with his own left jab. You know, Lalonde has a habit of pulling away from punches with his chin way up in the air, like a lantern in a storm. Ray's not going to continue to miss it. Question now, how big a scorecard mountain does Leonard have to climb, and how much energy at age 32 can he bring to the task? Good exchange. Took a good body shot, came right back. Lalonde staggered again. Some of this is just poor footwork by a fighter who is much clumsier than Ray Leonard. He may be a little confused, too. Uh -huh. so just right, missed, right. Just missed with the right hand. He's still there. He's still alive with it. He stopped using his jab. He stopped using that jab. The corner should tell him that. Lalonde looking for a chance to throw that right hand. And that's all he's looking for. He's got to set it up. And it releases less and less quickly oh. as the bout goes on. But there he got one in. Now he tries to follow up. He may have hurt Ray a little. I think he hurts him a little every time he lands that right hand with the head, Kevin. Leonard standing still for the moment. Stationary, yes. Fires back, finally. These guys measuring each other. Good exchange. This is a little like a movie fight. At first one, then the other. Lalonde uh, is showing the heart of a champion as well, because he's come back in this round the way Ray Leonard has in the previous couple of rounds. Under a minute to go. And this minute will tell who wins this round. 
Leonard does not have a confident look on his face. Remember how he tired in the late rounds against Tagler. He may be playing possum just a little bit as he stepped back there and visibly breathed deep. But Milan does not haggle. He's relatively inexperienced. I'd have to say Ray has more experience in big fights. We gotta see if he's got any, start, any, any gas left. On the other hand, he's accomplished more in terms of physical punishment here than Hagler did in 12 rounds. True. Leonard landing the left again as the round comes to a close. Good body shot. Keep driving. Keep driving. Eyes on my arms and legs. Okay? Keep it up. 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 All right. Lalonde comes back a little in this round. Whether he won it or not. He let Ray know that after the previous few rounds, he wasn't going to lay down for him. Which, from my standpoint point of view, is, is, was a good sign, was a good message to send out. Harold? Well, Ray, I've, uh, Larry, I've got it 76, 75, 4 to 4 in rounds. I just think that Ray is evening it up because Donnie Lalonde is standing straight up and he's an easy target for Ray's right hand. Well, we're going to see about stamina from here on and heart. And one of the great things about Ray Leonard is that he always can find some deep reservoir of will to carry him through late in the fight. Two thirds of this bout gone now. Four rounds remaining. And if you agree with Harold Letterman's scorecard, the qualified one it certainly is, there have been two chapters so far. Chapter one, Lalonde. Chapter two, Leonard. I have it five three. Lalonde. But I'm not, I'm not an expert. Vegas judges are fond of Ray Leonard, as they have shown on some occasions in the past. <laughs> that was a good exchange of hooks right there. Lalonde stopped using that jab, and that's when the rounds became closer and Ray started to dominate. Ray boxing more now, not brawling as he did through most of round six and seven. That's right. A couple steps in, a couple steps out. Missed. Milan able to counter inside with the right. Milan needs something to get himself going now. He has slowed down considerably. His raised right eye swollen with a cool swollen to me, on top of his nose being cut. Well, his left eye is a little bit closed oh. up. There's the right hand again. Oh, he's going after now Lalonde him. has another chance. He's going after him, too. Oh. Boy, Ray takes a good shot. Leonard slips a punch. Lalonde has to be careful not to punch himself out. There's blood over Lalonde's right eye. I don't know if that's his or Ray's. I think it's his. Good exchange. Good right hand by Leonard. He hurt Lalonde him. is hurt. Lalonde backs up against the ropes. Leonard landing at will. Let's hope they don't stop the bout. And Lalonde oh. goes down. Oh. Under a minute. Lalonde is badly hurt, and Ray will try to finish him off right here. Lalonde ought to grab on hold for his dear life. Great right, right hand, hand by Leonard. Lalonde staying up only through the force of will. Will he get up again and stop in the bout? I don't think he'll get up anymore. That is it. A magnificent comeback for Ray Leonard. You can't repeat this often enough. What has made Ray Leonard a great fighter is not his style, not his reflexes. Others have had style and reflexes. It is the will to win. He has a script in his head that he is going to win. He's going to find a way to win. And we saw it at work in this fight as graphically as you can.
didn't have to stop it after the first knockdown. Gives a man a chance. It's a close fight. He got up. He was willing to fight. So an evening that began rather badly for Ray Leonard. And one in which he appeared to lose the first four rounds of the fight. He's turned his way once again, as Larry Merchant suggested, by the sheer force of Leonard's will and determination. When you look at the replay here, Kevin Rooney, of this exchange, which led to the TKO at 2.30 of the ninth round. Got him hurt. Right hand. Miss. 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 Left hook. That hit him. He never saw it. And remember, this is in a round in which Leonard himself was hurt earlier by a right hand. And he came back. That was a good call. They let the fight continue after the first knockdown. But Ron's inexperience cost him. He should have grabbed Ray and threw him on the floor. <laughs> it took Donnie Lalonde a pretty good long time before he could stand up. Final punch count numbers should be interesting. Lalonde a little bit less accurate than Ray, in fact, considerably so. Leonard, once he stepped inside after round four, was able to land more or less at will. He was more selective in his punching, and a lot of those 508 total punches for Lalonde were the pawing left jab, which became less effective as the bout went on. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Chuck Hall for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, two minutes, 30 seconds of the ninth round. Referee Richard Steele stops the bout. A winner by a TKO and new super middleweight and light heavyweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Leonard. So the Ray Leonard, who was able to avenge his only loss against Roberto Duran, fall behind against Thomas Hearns and come back to knock him out, play a bit of a shell game to beat a heavily favored marvelous Marvin Hagler, got a scare thrown into him tonight by a bigger, stronger man, and faced that challenge and overcame it as well. So Sugar Ray Leonard climbed another mountain. Sometimes I get the feeling he could climb Everest in a round if he had to. And Sugar Ray Leonard and Donnie Lalonde are here with us to go over the fight. Gentlemen, sometimes the fight starts before the fight. And I've been curious about the dreams you spoke of going into the fight. What were they and what significance do you think they had? With me, Larry, it was, it was a frightening scenario that I had a vision of. I mean, I, it was a premonition. I saw myself being knocked down about two, three weeks before the fight, and I kept trying to block it out. I just kept trying to block it out. And it was frightening because walking to the ring, because there was a delay, because the national anthems were being played and everything, so I had even more time to think about it. So when I got into the ring, I didn't get the same feel that I had for Hagler because the motivation wasn't, was forced. I had to force myself to be motivated because of Lalonde's. Well, do you think you were being warned somehow? Your inside, your subconscious was warning you to be careful of this guy's big punch or was it just some anxiety of the unknown? The unknown. I think that's what it was because in the fight itself, the first round, Don, you know, I was more tentative, I just, more apprehensive because I'm saying, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? And after I was knocked down, I was OK. I was like, OK, now that's over. What about your dreams? Well, first, it first started in the uh, first press conference, on the first press conference, when we were doing the publicity shots. In New York? Um, yeah, in New York. And we were standing side by side, and I just sort of felt this weird sensation go through my body. And it was, I hit you with the right hand, and you went down. I thought, wow, that's great. You know, that's, it felt like it was going to happen. And then I had never had anything. And usually I dream about my fights, and I always tell people. And so writers were asking me, you know, have you said, no, I haven't been dreaming anything. And then about five days before the fight and three days before I dreamt, I was stopped 
but Ray hit me with an overhand right and stopped was, me. Is that, that just that anxiety, or did you you think you felt you weren't ready for this man? I'm uh, no, it's not a matter of not being ready. I could never have been better prepared than I was for this fight. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> it would have been a lot easier. In the pre-fight preparations, much of the posturing goes on to assert dominance, and I felt that it was almost like he was George Bush who established the agenda. And it bothered you a little bit that he wasn't too concerned about the great Sugar Ray Leonard. Well, I tell you, he impressed me, Larry, as far as maintains composure, because I honestly believe, and I told you this also, that when the event happens, that one of two things will happen. He will be in awe of the event, uh, or two, he will rise to another level of competition. And he was able to rise to that level. First three rounds. You've already said you were tentative. Was that because you were waiting for the punch or because he was something more than you expected? And what was your feeling about those first three rounds? He, Donnie <clears throat> was surprisingly quick with his hands. His left jab was not as handicapped as they say it was. And uh, his movement, I mean, he just was quicker. He was not easy to hit. Quickly, your thoughts on those three rounds? I felt very good, very in control. I felt, uh, Ray is very smart in the ring, but at the same time, I felt a size advantage. I felt a strength advantage, and I felt very in control. I was very confident all the way through. Let's then go to round four, the turning point in the fight. Here we are at close quarters. Ray, did you sense here, it seems like you're almost waiting for something to happen. Well, I'm not too sure about Donnie's style. And what I'm actually doing is trying to get a better picture. And, but in waiting, you see there, the, old, the right hand came in. And uh, at this point here, I'm OK. I'm not really hurt at all. As a matter of fact, I'm clear eyed Did you see him that way, Donnie? Definitely. I, I did not feel that that was a knockout punch. I, I only took it within myself as a one punch, landing one punch. And uh, I felt that uh, knowing Ray's you know, competitive spirit, I knew that he'd be back in there fighting strong. But there was also one right hand particular that really rung my bell. It should be coming up uh, shortly because I was moving away and I was trying to make Donnie exert himself. And uh, he just got a little careless. That was a good right hand there. But his right hands were always laying on the side of the head, which, you know, shook me, it shook me a lot of times. You know, I think there's a lot of times in the fight, other than the knockdown, that there's better right hands landed. You've got an incredible chance. There's a lot of much, much bigger men I've hit that hard, and they've gone down for good. Ray, here comes a punch that we think opened up your eye, right next to your nose. You started to dab at it immediately, you see there. It was Did more, it concern you? It was just bothersome, Larry, because uh, there was a flow of blood, and I was trying to find where it was coming from. I knew I wasn't cut and on or above the eye, but... Uh, it was really bothersome. Now you see blood. You've hurt him in this round, Donnie. Do you feel you let him get away? I felt that uh, I, I could have been a little bit uh, more aggressive after this round, but I think I did what I could during the round, considering I had Ray Leonard in the ring with me. I mean, he wasn't cooperating with me. There's two men in there. Here's the knockdown in slow motion. Ray, it doesn't look like a clean punch. It's just the power of his punches, Larry, because it was like a kid. I mean, slapping a kid, knocking him off balance. Every punch he was throwing, especially the right hand in particular, would knock me halfway across the ring. The scorecards reflected that. Two of the judges had Lalonde ahead by three rounds to one, and another judge three rounds to one, but by four points because of a two-point fourth round. Ray, you've been knocked down. You have blood somewhere near your left eye. That's the eye that Tommy Hearns must up. That's the eye that you had your operation on. What was going through your mind then? I wasn't thinking about my eye because I know it wasn't the eye itself. But, you know, it's always uh, irritating and frustrating for there to be a flow of blood for any fighter. I think psychologically, mentally, it's disturbing to a fighter to see his own blood or to feel his own blood. And that's what it was for me. Did it rile you up? Did, did that, as much as anything, say, I've got to do something? Yes, I think so. I believe so, because I think at that point, not of desperation because I knew that I had more time, but then again, I didn't know how severe the cut was until I got back to my corner 
and Jenks Morton, who I was really impressed with because he was under a great deal of scrutiny because of the absence of Angelo Dundee. But he said, he, he called Eddie, the cut man, and Eddie did what he had to do. And at that point, I was fine. Did it cross your mind even fleetingly? Dundee should be here right now. This is a crisis. No, it really didn't cross my mind at all because I didn't have time to think. This guy was throwing punches. He allowed me to think. But again, uh, you know, credit was not given to my corner, Jenks Moore, Dave Jacobson, Jose Carrera, who are very professional, who's trained professional fighters and champions. You see the other guys in trouble. You've just knocked them down. Your thoughts after the fourth round? Felt very good, very in control, very confident. Felt just keep doing what you're doing, and you're going to get to him and finish it. You've expressed great respect for Ray Leonard. Did you expect him to come out more aggressively after that? No, not in particular. I know Ray has enough confidence in himself that he can... It's like when you play hockey and a guy hits you with a stick. You just remember his number. You don't go chasing him and get a penalty. And you get him later. And so I knew that he would... You know, fight a very strategic fight, and I wasn't expecting any amateurish reaction from it. There was a change, however. Not an amateur change, a professional change. Let's take a look at the highlights of rounds five, seven, and nine. That punch indicated, Ray, that you were out after a different kind of a fight after the fourth round. I picked the pace up. And uh, at this point here, Larry, because, you know, normally I uh, really pour it on the later rounds because I've started to throw combinations here and to see whether or not Donnie can keep up. But here, Donnie still is very physical because he was able to throw me off of him. But my punches were starting to land. The combinations were starting to be more frequent. Did you sense that he felt enough of an urgency that he was stepping it up? I don't know if it was coming from an urgency, but he definitely was stepping it up, being more aggressive. And... Uh, I just, I figured personally that he was just wanting to uh, take me out of my mold because I had sort of been controlling the action. Couldn't that have extent. been seen as an advantage to you because then you might be able to really land a hard right with him coming at you? Depends on who's getting off first. The idea, theoretically, yes, you're right, but I wasn't getting off first, Ray was. Was the strategy working, Ray? It was working because I had him pretty much befuddled. I think he was starting to throw a lot of shots that were unnecessary. In other words, it was instinctively. Except a couple of times he threw that right hand and it found his target. But actually, Larry like, woke me up a couple of times. Here, you know, I had him where I want him because basically he's just trying to hold me off, thin me off. But you're getting into a brawl. Is that what you have to do at this stage of your career? At this point, no, not really, no. People say, well, his legs were gone and he's not moving as much as he did against Hagler. I'm not fighting Marvin Hagler. I'm fighting a much taller guy, a guy with Great hand speed, and a guy with a lot of power. And so that you have to use your quickness. Exactly. Here, uh, inside, I am more effective. Like, I stuck my chin out, because like now, I see the fatigue has set in with Donnie. So it's combinations here, at this point here. Were you fatigued, Donnie? I think what happened is, mentally, I started becoming a little unraveled. Not physically fatigued, mentally fatigued, in the sense that Ray was keeping up the pace and throwing such crisp punches, and I wasn't used to that level of competition for that long. You had never been in a prize fight in which after you had landed some of the punches you landed, the guy was still jumping at you. Exactly. I was in with a better, much higher caliber fighter I'd ever been in. But... Yet here you are yeah. in the ninth round, and it looked like you were making the comeback. You were showing your championship spirit. I got it together a little bit. I started um, getting myself back together, and, and uh, getting uh, combinations together and, and putting my punches back, which goes to show it wasn't physical fatigue, it was mental. Ray, what about you? You see this guy, all of a sudden, he's coming back at you. Well, he started throwing a lot of combinations, most of our punches, but again, you see here, well, I heard with the right hand, but now, again, my combinations, the left hook proved to be a very effective weapon here. I'm letting everything hang loose right now. I let my arms hang loose there as I lay down, too. <laughs> Do you remember any of this, Donnie? Um, looking back, I remember being on the ropes and Ray throwing those that combination where I was trying to uh, make him miss. But uh, that's about it. Looking at it now, was there anything you could have done? I could have grabbed onto him and, and forcibly held onto him, whether Richard tried to break us up or not. Um, or I could have punched back. 
but maybe I was a bit too hurt. I don't know. Here's the slow motion look at the knockdown and the knockout. Try to analyze it for us, Ray. Well, I, again, I, I picked the pace up. The right hand found his target. I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, very close to Donnie, so he won't have leverage on his right hand. I found myself to be very effective and, and was able to get my punches off quicker inside. Donnie was bobbing and weaving. I think it's all instinctively that he's doing this, but he kept his head too high, too erect, to allow me to throw combinations. A lot of those punches were missing because he was bobbing and weaving. All right, now you try to clinch, Donnie, and look at this, Ray, you hit him on the break of the clinch. Here I was trying to be a gentleman and uh, fight, <laughs> nice, clean fight, fair fight, and Ray hits me on a clinch. I'm protesting. I want to... <laughs> it's too late, Donnie. <laughs> you were trying to do the right thing, Donnie, but apparently you just weren't strong enough at that point. Yes, that's true. I, by the looks of it here, the effect that Bray's punches had on me just took the strength away from me. And we all knew it was over at this point. Well, you did. I didn't. I was in dreamland. I was still laying there saying, come on, let me get up and finish this fight. On the scorecards from rounds five through eight, Lalonde had only one round in one of the official scorecards. And overall, he was ahead on one card going in to the ninth round. Ray, you scored a 10 for yourself in this fight. Why? Because I went up against a guy that no one, well, boxing expert, didn't think too much of a guy that exemplified what champions are made of. Heart, determination. And uh, I came out on top, Larry. You did what you had to do. Exactly. It required a great deal of physical contact, but I was very proud of myself. Is it an illusion from past fights that many observers hold that you were just a dancing master and you didn't have to fight? Because I sort of remember distinctively, distinctly where you, you did have to do this kind of thing, even in your prime. Well, I think there was a major misconception. They said, well, Ray's talent started to deteriorate because normally he would move around the ring, look pretty, and showboat. But the fact is, the fact remains, this man's a much better fighter than giving credit for. So that even though I call this a Ferrari against a pickup truck, you feel that you can fight in both styles? If necessary, if need be. And uh, Monday on the 7th, it was necessary. <laughs> Nani. This was your first major event. How would you score yourself? Oh, I think very high. I, I think given what I had going in, I uh, performed as good as I could have expected to or as anyone could have expected me to. I was in there against, pound for pound, one of the greatest fighters of all time. I handled myself, I think, very well. I fought a very good fight. Um, obviously, it didn't end up the way I would like it to have ended up, but uh, I feel that I did everything uh, that I was prepared to do, and I, I'm very proud of my performance out there. I would like, um, I, I have learned a lot from that fight, and uh, obviously I would like the opportunity to show the old master what I have learned. <laughs> old master. So but that, so that means not, not that me, old, <laughs> the master. So that means that you are going to continue with your career. Definitely. Like I say, ideally, I would like to get back in there and finish up what I started in the fourth round. If not, I'll get on and become a world champion against someone else. You've made or grossed or reputed $5 million or more in this fight. What do you plan to do with it? Uh, money's really never been uh, a motivator for me. What I plan on doing is just continuing on my life. Right now, I'm choosing to be a fighter. I want to uh, get back the title. And then uh, I'm doing a bit of acting and then carry on, have a good time. Don, thank you for a great fight. Thank you for appearing with us. Ray, we'll be back. After all that, all I can say is, oh, Canada. Gretzky traded to Los Angeles, Johnson banished from the Olympics, Hilton and Lalonde losing championships on the same weekend. But keep the faith, neighbors. Michael Fox had a terrific year. As for Ray Leonard, since he has said he'll fight again, will it be past as prologue or future as epilogue? First, past as prologue.
second. Hearn. Ray, we know you're not ready to climb any new mountains soon, but let's get your reaction to these names and your assessments. Tommy Hearns. You weren't very high on his last fight against Kinchin. My impression of Tommy Hearns is the fact that here's a young man with enormous talent, has proven himself in the past, being champions in three different weight categories, four, four different weight categories, but a young man that doesn't concentrate or focus in on one particular person. He has a tendency to deviate and think about someone else. Marvin Hagler, do you think you'll get him back in the ring? I'm not trying to get Marvin back in the ring now. I think Marvin Hagler has made up his mind that he wants to be a movie star. And God bless him. I see him in the, in the theaters. <laughs> but you've made some comebacks, and he's entitled to make at least one. Well, I'm sure he won't make as many as I've made, but uh, I think that Hagler is content where he is now. Then let me throw some other names at you. Virgil Hill is an unbeaten light heavyweight champion, a former Olympic gold medalist. You fought one light heavyweight champion. You want to take on another one? Well, Donnie mm. Lalonde reassured me that I'm not light heavyweight. Uh, and uh, that gives away just too much. Larry. I don't think that I uh, give myself, you know, a chance to perform by fighting bigger men. I think the fact of fighting Lalonde was just a challenge. But at this stage of your career, might a smaller, quicker man take advantage of your aging be a little quicker than you are well they're trying to convince me that i'm 32 i don't feel 32 <laughs> if that makes any sense but uh despite a smaller man speed won't be a factor because i'm still have my hand speed uh i don't see the problem with so that. let me throw some names at you and your quick thoughts on them lloyd hunnigan who is an outstanding welterweight might emerge as the welterweight uh peculiar guy but uh he's a guy that's that's unorthodox Michael Nunn, if he should somehow unify all the middleweight championships in the next year, that might be uh, a real big mountain for you. There's always considerations, but I think my, I wish we had more Michael Nunns in the sport of boxing. Class act. And uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, if he should be able to prove to win a welterweight title, would he be someone who might be in your future? And that's a joke. You don't think he can do it? Too small. I mean, for, I mean, for me to fight him, he's too small. I sense that you somehow feel there's uh, the biological clock ticking, that you're anxious to get as much in as you can while you can. You're absolutely right, Larry. Uh, you know, I don't have too much long, too much time left, not physically, but mentally, and I want to do as much as I can in the next year or so. In terms of personal satisfaction, which is obviously your highest priority in making these sporadic comebacks, did you achieve what you wanted to achieve with this fight? Yes, it was a, a goal that I set out to achieve, to win two titles, to beat a legitimate light heavyweight champion, Lalonde, although people say, they question that, they debate that. I'm very proud of it. Thank you, Ray, for November 7th and for today. And these last words. You may have noticed two things in these 75 minutes. One, I made no reference to Sugar Ray Leonard winning his fourth and fifth championships. This may be the sincerest form of flattery because the promoters have invented three titles for every two pounds. The fallout is that the word champion means less than the fighter who is or isn't one. We know who the real fighters are, and Ray Leonard is certainly one of them. Second thing, nor has he been pressed to tell us when he finally and truly and irrevocably will retire, relieving his HBO colleagues of the burden of explaining or trying to explain his comebacks. So here it is. He's good at what he does, so he keeps doing it. It agrees with him psychologically, financially, even aerobically. It agrees with us because he is a wonder to behold. For Jim Lampley, Kevin Rooney, and the HBO staff, I'm Larry Merchant.